I had the privilege of spending my career in national security intelligence. And in that job, I teamed with some of the most elite minds and advanced technologies in the world to solve very hard problems and keep this country safe. But in that context, where insights are needed quickly, the unknowns are many, and the problems truly complex, human machine teams that achieve incremental gains in performance simply aren't good enough. And in that world, unlike the world of consumer apps, not good enough isn't measured in lost ad revenue or clicks. It can be measured in casualties. This is why I'm on a mission to improve human machine teaming outcomes by 1,000 times over the status quo. How many of you, show of hands, used a navigation app to get here today? This is an everyday example of how we rely on machine intelligence to help us execute cognitive tasks better than we could on our own. Algorithms play a key role in our lives, whether it's how we manage our personal finances, how we see the news and learn about world events, or even how we find love. And when it works well, we experience this one plus one equals three effect. In fact, that's the hallmark of good human machine teaming. When I was an intelligence analyst, I was utterly outmatched by the amount of information that I had to consume and analyze every day. My first job in the field was to report on changes and insurgent tactics, how they were building bombs that were killing US soldiers abroad. I had to go through mounds of information in different languages across different computer systems. But man, I love that job from the very first day. And why? Because I felt like if I could figure it out, I could really make a difference. But every day for that first month, I left work with a splitting headache. I was pushing through as much information as I could, but I still wasn't moving fast enough. What I didn't know then, but very smart people doing cognitive science research have shown many times since, is that information overload actually limits our ability to figure out what all of that information means. So the technology I was teaming with to help me access more information faster than ever was actually making it harder for me to do sense making. So how did I get the headaches to stop? I started to realize what I needed to pay the most attention to. I realized that I needed to focus my attention and slowly but surely, I went from being behind the changes in tactics to giving soldiers and decision makers the information they needed to anticipate threats and to be better protected. This was the first clue in the formula for superhuman thinking. I told you, I'm not looking for a one plus one plus three improvement. I'm looking to get to a thousand X improvement. Jackie, how do you do that? By unblocking and delivering a 10 X improvement on three common bottlenecks faced by human machine teams. You're probably thinking, 10 plus 10 plus 10, that's not 1,000, and that's right. That's actually what most people get wrong about human machine teaming. They think about making incremental improvements at different steps of a task and just stringing that together and adding it together. But superior human machine teaming is about learning how to leverage the relative weaknesses and strengths of people and algorithms in ways that compound. So if you pick the right bottlenecks to unblock, you can turn that addition into multiplication and you can achieve 10 times 10 times 10 equals 1,000. So what I learned in that first job was that if I could design human machine teams that avoided information overload, we could unlock that first 10x. Once you get on the other side of information overload, I found that I encountered 
the next bottleneck. And this is one I am sure all of you have experienced at one point or another. The frustration of not being able to answer a question at the speed of thought. How many times have you been researching something for work or for school and you're deep in the text or you're watching a lecture and out of nowhere a question strikes you? But you're pretty sure the answer to that question isn't in whatever you're watching or reading right now. So you're faced with this decision, man, do I follow my curiosity or do I stay the course? If I follow my curiosity, I got a task switch, it's gonna affect my focus, right? And it might not pan out, but I just might find that deeper insight that I really need, that's gonna make a difference. If I stay the course, at least I know I'm gonna make some progress, but I'm gonna have to keep track of that question somehow. Maybe I'll just open a new tab in my browser. How many tabs do you have open in the browser on your phone <laughs> right now? <laughs> okay, that's what I call curiosity debt. How many of you, when you're faced with that decision, tend to stay the course? How many of you tend to follow your curiosity? So intelligence analysts are faced with this crossroads, this cognitive crossroads, every day. But so is every single human being learning something for the first time. And the tension between those two choices only gets more acute when there's time pressure, when the clock is ticking. 10xing this, or unblocking it, would feel like it's opposite, perfect flow. You go from question to question to answer, no friction. No curiosity debt. This is one of the things that I find so exciting and a little bit magical about AI-based chat interfaces like ChatGPT. In a single conversation, you can pivot from question to answer to question to answer to new topic, back to your train of thought. No new tabs. AI also points to the key to unlocking the third barrier to superhuman thinking. This one is a little bit different than maybe anything you guys have heard about before. It relates to being able to read and understand machine data as easily as we understand text. Advanced sensor technology can see the world in superhuman ways. Whether it's measuring greenhouse gas emissions from a factory all the way from space, or precisely locating a radio frequency signal thousands of miles away on the other side of the world. The problem is, it takes significant expertise to read and understand that data and unlock its value. And there are very few people that can do it well. But even on a small scale, it can have an outsized impact. On October 2nd of this year in Spruce Pines, North Carolina, a team of first responders got a call that a man needed to be medically evacuated by air. Less than a week earlier, Hurricane Helene had ripped through the Spruce Pines area. And the pilots had no idea if they were going to be able to find the man, let alone a safe place to land the helicopter. Luckily, one of the first responders had a friend. His name was Kyle. And Kyle had a superpower. Kyle was an expert in interpreting a highly technical type of data collected by sensors that are called synthetic aperture radars. And he happened to work for a company that builds those sensors, puts them on satellites in space, and collects data all the time. So Kyle got the call. He got his hands on some data that had just been collected over North Carolina after the storm hit. And he got to work. Kyle reviewed information that to most of us would kind of look like the crackle on the old television screens. But in all that noise, he found the only building still standing in that entire area. Just might be where that man was sheltered. He also, and more importantly, found right nearby a safe landing zone for the helicopter. So those first responders, they loaded up the helicopter with supplies, 
They took off and they headed straight to that landing zone. They wasted no time. They wasted no fuel. When they got there, they found that many people were sheltering at that building. And several, not just one, needed medical attention. All of those people were medevac that day. And the people that were left behind were left with critical supplies that would help them survive just a few days longer. Kyle's ability to read machine data had an outsized impact that day. He enabled those first responders not just to save one, but many lives. And it begs the question, what if instead of designing our AI teammates to understand us better, as chatbots simulate, we also design technology to help us understand how they see the world? This would expand our ability to sense and understand the world around us in superhuman ways. These are the types of problems I work on with my team at my company, Whitespace. And not just understanding one sensor data type at a time, but many. It's a very exciting and promising area of research and development. And every day we work on these problems, every day we get a little closer to that thousand X. But you have to keep in mind that this technology breaking through this third barrier can only be done effectively if you keep the other two pillars in mind. Avoid information overload and enable people to answer questions at the speed of thought. So every day I go to work and I'm a little bit more excited. Not just because thinking like a superhuman is gonna make us more productive, it absolutely will, but because I believe it has the potential to make us better humans. If we can speed up sense making by a thousand times, AI might never threaten to replace human judgment in some of the most critical decisions that our leaders face. In fact, it'll make more time for them to exercise that judgment and still act in time to matter. We will be living in a world where preparing the information for key decisions and trade-offs, whether on the battlefield or in the boardroom, happens as quickly and as easily as finding a route to a new destination. We will be living in a world where exercising superhuman judgment becomes as commonplace as using an app. And I don't know about you, but that's the kind of world I want to live in. And it's coming. Are you ready? Thank you.